On this week's episode of Inside Iowa, check out what the engineering department is up to and how it's making a big impact. Learn more about a popular campus sport, slacklining. See how one student found his passion on campus. Sink your teeth into some ribs with Kinnick's Kitchen. Hear what Hawkeye fans had to say about the university. And storm Kinnick Stadium with the kids' captains. Inside Iowa starts now. Hey everyone, welcome back to another great episode of Inside Iowa, where you can get an inside look at what's happening on campus. I'm Lauren Moss. And I'm Eric Dawn. Each week we'll take you on a tour around the university so you can see what's new on campus. From research to the classroom and beyond, we've got it all. Let's check out what's new at the Mechanical and Industrial Engineering Department, where they're creating a new software program that designs and tests electronic circuit boards and they're doing it all virtually. That's right, Lauren, and I've got to tell you, this is a game changer. Right now, it's planned to test the electronics and circuit boards in nuclear power plants and will soon be available to manufacturing companies for their factory floor. Students are actively involved, too. They're building and designing the user interface of the new software, and it's going to change the electronic and manufacturing industries. And that means products can be tested and built faster, which means less money for research, and those savings can be passed along to you. Let's see how it's all done. Electronics are all around us. We rely on technology for GPS, phone calls, computers, toys, and even in defense systems. All these electronic devices use circuit boards which have to be designed and tested before put to market, which can be an expensive and timely endeavor. There have been systems on the market that have cost as much as a billion dollars to the companies that make them because they've failed and they've had to send out replacements. Uh, our warranty costs because little tiny pieces overheated and failed. So again, could we predict that before we even started to make the thing? That's where the University of Iowa is breaking new ground with a software called Preview, which is designed by the Center for Computer Aided Design in the Engineering Department. Preview has the ability to analyze circuit boards virtually in a 3D environment, allowing engineers to test and design circuit boards quicker and easier. The idea is on a computer, model and simulate everything that has to do with circuit boards. If you just imagine all the lights in the country, in the world, that's the tip of the iceberg with respect to electricity. And as products get smarter and smarter, you see circuit boards in everything from toys to missiles. As with everything else that you design and build, you have to make prototypes. You have to test it out. Uh, a lot of times that's trial and error. That's expensive. So I want to test it out, design it, analyze it on the computer. So Preview is a software system that lets you model and simulate and test circuit boards on the computer. So you don't have to do it in a lab. You save time and you save money. Currently in testing, Preview will have the ability to scan and test circuit boards virtually, which will benefit everyone from the engineers who designed the product all the way to the production floor. It'll be a great game changer for manufacturing because we'll be able to find, fix, and deliver product quicker. We'll be able to give the engineering uh, designers more detail on what the problem is. It'll be a, not only a game changer for manufacturing, but it'll help feed back to the engineer where some of those problems that, that he couldn't find out when he did his, his original design. The design process of an electronic device can be an expensive and time-consuming venture but Preview hopes to change all that. Large companies might go through as much as three or four test models of a circuit board. And if it's a new design, the first one could cost half a million. The second one costs 300,000. The third one costs 200,000. What if I only had to do one, right? What if I only had to build one practice model? Then I'm saving a ton of money. And if you're talking about missiles, you only get one test, right? And then it's gone. So can I test that, those key components on the computer? And when it comes to modeling and simulation, that's why we do all the stuff on the computer that we want to do. When we simulate a crash of a car, when we simulate a weather system, because I want to run it over and over again, changing different things and see how it improves or gets worse. I want to do the same thing with circuit boards for 
cell phones for missiles, for GPS units in a, in a John Deere vehicle. Saving companies time and money benefits the consumer as well. Ultimately, it'll reduce costs. If you can save a company money, presumably that savings get passed on to the customer. If you can look at reliability, and you can ensure or help ensure that there are fewer failures or that parts last longer, then the product becomes more reliable. Immediate plans for preview include testing the circuit boards in nuclear power plants. With the nuclear power, power plant uh, project uh, that has been funded by Electric Power Research Institute, APRI, in this project we try to make a digital platform that can be able to uh, help maintenance engineers in the nuclear power plant in prediction of failures. So in nuclear power plants, there are like in-service circuit boards that are 30 years, 40 years uh, old, like, like this kind of a circuit board where the components are pretty big and pretty old technology. And you can now find replacement parts and components and circuit boards easily. The power industry, especially with uh, nuclear power plants, have circuit boards in them that are years old. Because of the number of requirements, it's a very stringent review process to remake replacements. I want to know when those things fail. If one circuit board that's pretty old and a power plant fails, you know, possibly that power plant has to shut down. Engineering students at the University of Iowa also get first-hand experience helping code the program and design the user interface. Learning how to program with engineering is really useful, but you also learn about more so problem solving. So you can use the skills that you learned in programming and figure out a lot of things in a different way. Uh, I think this is extremely rewarding. It's given me a lot of more in-depth research into uh, other types of engineering such as computer programming. Because of this, like, it's actually gotten me towards be wanting to become more of a computer engineer simply because I'm able to understand all these things a lot better now. So while Preview is in its infancy, the possibility of the software is endless. What if you could walk into buy a car and have something on your hand and predict how long is that going to last? When is that window going to stop working? That would be awesome, right? Or what if, you know, more near term, you're in an assembly plant and you're testing circuit boards for the manufacturer and one fails? And then you can run on, on a little handheld device some basic tests and see why did that thing fail? What if I can reverse engineer? I can take a circuit board that's 30 years old in a power plant, I can scan it create a version of that circuit board on my computer, then do all sorts of redesigns, modifications, analyses, and find out that that particular circuit board that's been sitting there for 30 years only has a year left. So I better start thinking about replacing it. That would be huge. That's the direction we're headed in with, with EPRI. What a great project. It's so cool to see how the Hawkeyes are making such a difference. I can't wait to see what they come up with next. After the break, check out what slacklining is all about. And meet a student who found a magical skill on campus. Inside Iowa, we'll be right back. There are over 24,000 bridges in Iowa. But only one connects University of Iowa hospitals and clinics to Iowa River Landing. From pediatrics and women's health to cardiology and routine exams, world-class medical care can be found at a new convenient location in Coralville. Iowa River Landing is here, and it's designed just for you. For an appointment, call 319-467-2000. and relax as Java Blend takes you from your home right into the Java House in downtown Iowa City. Experience local and national talent perform for a live audience featuring musical groups from all over the country. Java Blend puts you in the front row of each performance. Java Blend is presented by Iowa Public Radio and the Hawkeye Network. This is Coach Bluter, and I'm here to tell you it's game on. 
The Hawkeyes are ready for the season, and we hope you're ready to join us. Order your Iowa women's basketball season tickets today. Call 1-800-IA-HAWKS or visit HawkeyeSports.com. Welcome back. Have you ever been on campus and seen students walking across some sort of tightrope tied across the trees? It's called slacklining and it's a relatively new sport. Its popularity is growing on campus and it's a great way for students to meet each other. And it's also the unofficial sport of the Pentecrest. It's not a tightrope circus act and it's not an odd way of tree climbing. So what is it? It's called slacklining. Slacklining is a sport where you take um, a piece of flat rope called webbing, put it between two trees, tension it, and then walk on it. Back in the mid-80s, there was a group of climbers who had this big, long climb planned out, and they needed to start early in the morning. Unfortunately, it was raining when they woke up, and so they spent the rest of the day hanging out around their campsite, where they found a couple chains hung up between trees. They started, started walking on it, and then one of them decided that instead of that, they should try walking on rope and some of the webbing that they had. And thus, the sport was born. Abe Klein, an engineering student at Iowa, is the leader of Iowa City Slackers, a Facebook group dedicated to setting up rigs and doing tricks between trees. I was going to college out in Colorado and was walking around the main quad and saw a couple people doing it. So I decided to try it and picked it up really fast. There is a certain, I don't know how to describe it, kind of a je ne sais quoi about being on the line and the feeling of balance and serenity you have. I can't honestly describe it no matter how long I try, but I just tell people if you get on the line and you spend a half second up there, you understand why we do it. Klein posts updates about slacking times via the group's Facebook page. Many members are Iowa students. I'd say it's about a 50-50 split. Most of the students who generally would join these types of, this type of club are all at home doing their own thing. So I'm hoping that it, membership kind of takes off when school gets back in session and there's more students hanging out. The Pentacrest offers an ideal spot for students to slack and exhibits the sport for observers or rookie slackers, such as UI sophomore Tyler Page. Honestly, I was going around with a friend just talking to random people. I saw Abe messing around between the trees. I had to ask him why he was pulling two trees together. The elasticity you feel through your muscles, like the pure, I don't even know how to describe it. You just get a sense that all your muscles are working in perfect coordination when you're trying to do such intricate balancing techniques. Definitely, if I get any time, I would be out here every time Abe is out here. Eventually, I hope to get my own rig and set it up myself, but uh, it might be a while. Slacklining is a really approachable sport, but it's a lot easier if you have someone there who knows how to teach, how to teach slacklining. And that's what I do with much of my free time. All right, Eric, what do you think? You think you could do that? I don't know. I have a hard enough time standing on two feet. I don't need to be walking across any <laughs> tight rows. true. Your balance is a little off. <laughs> well, from slacklining to a sleight of hand, students have a wide range of activities to discover. And while students come to the University of Iowa to prepare for a bright and successful future, sometimes they find their true calling outside of a classroom. With his cards and coins in just a sleight of his hand, George Winland, a recent graduate of the University of Iowa, spent his time on campus entertaining his fellow students in the art of magic. I started doing magic here, uh, kind of sitting on the camp bus, um, just heading to class. I would be flourishing with my cards, and trying to practice uh, new techniques and new moves. Someone stopped me, um, asked me if I was a magician, and it turns out it was uh, one of my good friends that had um, an interest group for uh, the Pi Alpha Phi fraternity. Winland stunned audiences at different events on campus, including several for honor students, multicultural events, and even just approaching interested students anytime he had a deck of cards or a few coins. My, my favorite effects are the ones that are very either one-on-one -on -one or just in a small knit group. While many may come to the university to secure a job and make some money, Winland has a special knack for making it appear with just a wiggle of his fingers. It's magic. My friend 
shown me one magic trick and I was instantly hooked. He actually had me select one card from the middle of the deck, just like that. He fanned through the cards, went ahead, placed my card in that fan back into the middle of the deck and he didn't do anything else. He just kind of let the deck sit, sit there, snapped his fingers and he actually made the jack come to the very top. He said he pulled the card out brought it up to the very top, and I didn't even know exactly what he had done. He told me to watch closely at the Jack of Hearts as he pushes it in with his elbow. He went ahead and did so, and did that. Gave a cold cut and snapped one more time. It wasn't on top, it was actually in his mouth when I finally saw it. <laughs> Winlin was inspired by a friend, but whatever inspires you and whatever your skills may be, whether they're learned inside the classroom or out, the University of Iowa helps students find their talents and improve on those things that make all our lives a little more magical. How nice is that? What's great about college is finding what you really want to do. I discovered I wanted to become a journalist thanks to DITV. Me too, Lauren, but I also think I'm a pretty good magician. All right, Eric. Check this trick out. Oh, wow, I'm surprised that worked. <laughs> well, during the break, I'll go try to find Lauren, but when we return, we'll head over to the stadium for some delicious barbecue ribs with Kinnick's Kitchen. We have a certain way of doing things. You'll see it in the determination of our students, in the classroom and on our fields, in the collaboration among our faculty that lead to great innovation and change, in the vision of our writers, artists, and doctors bringing the world to Iowa, and Iowa to the world. It's the Hawkeye way. Sabi has been very active on the offensive glass. And there it is. Devin Marble with that score joins his Dan Roy in the thousand point club here in Iowa. The first father son duo in Big Ten history to accomplish that feat. He just made history. Father and son each in the same exclusive club in Iowa basketball history. Performing Iowa, the University of Iowa's finest in music, dance, and theater performances. Go behind the curtain and see why the University of Iowa is a hub for artistic expression and creative production. Performing Iowa, each week only on the Hawkeye Network. Hawkeye fans love to tailgate. And in this week's Kinnick's Kitchen segment, we'll meet Amy from Winifred's Catering in Cedar Rapids. She's such a grill master that she is brought out to a few games every year. She'll show us the secrets to her famous ribs and explain how Iowa does Memphis-style barbecue better than Memphis does. And it all starts with the ribs, which are seasoned, smoked for a few hours, and thrown on the grill. Let's check out her Iowa-style spread. We're here with Amy, who's with Winifred's Catering, who cooks such good food. She is brought out here a couple times a year just to bring her awesome grill and her awesome recipes. So, Amy, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Doing great. Awesome. I see your grill. It's got lots of food on it. Tell me a little bit about what you're cooking here today. Well, today is a chili dog day. You know, we're trying to make it really be a hot day since it's going to be a hot day today. Yes. You know, so hot items. Got some fresh rubbed uh, smoked uh, brisket. Uh -huh. I'm doing some beef hot dogs with a homemade chili sauce on top. That's our barbecue ribs that are, we're known for. Everybody knows us for our ribs. So tell me a little bit about 
what your style of ribs is. First off, do you like beef or pork? Because I know these are all pork. We do not do beef. We let Texas do beef. And I'm from Texas, so I'm used to beef ribs. However, I really love pork ribs too. Good. So what kind of what do you do? This How do you prepare? Spare. This is a spare rib. Uh -huh. We also do baby backs. Um, we uh, no rub or nothing. We just smoke them for about four and a half hours okay. at about 200, and then we finish them always on the grill. Okay. And our own barbecue sauce. We make it ourselves. Uh, do a good job. It's got a little bit of a Midwestern feel to it. So what's in the barbecue sauce? What makes your sauce so special? Obviously, well, I know you can't give us all your ingredients. No, it, I, I would say um, it's, n it's not a vinegar type. It's more of a... We start with a, a base barbecue sauce uh -huh. that we like, and then we add to it. Okay. Okay, and then... Um, so it's not a real spicy. It's more of a, a tang but it's not vinegar. Awesome. Now, I got to tell you, that brisket looks fabulous. Tell me a little bit about how you prepared this brisket. What brisket did you do to is, get that Brisket is a special rub that I, I created um, based a, a little bit off of emerald from Lagasse. Uh -huh. Okay, but I added more a little to it, you know. It's not a it's not a hot, it's not cayenne-inspired. It's more of just a flavor enhancer. Mm -hmm. We want to let the brisket stand out on its own with the barbecue. So... Now, so when you first said dry rub, we were talking a little earlier that I asked you if it was Memphis style. Now, you have a story about this. So typically when, it, when you come to barbecue, if it's a dry rub, they might say Memphis. But yes. is that always the case? No, because I call it Iowa style. Why is that? Because I went down to Memphis in November, and I ate through Memphis barbecue, and I came to find out that we do barbecue in Iowa just as or better than Memphis. You heard it here. Iowa does better Memphis barbecue than Memphis does. That's some bold words. I'm looking forward to trying that. I'm about to sink my teeth into famous Winifred's ribs, and I got to tell you, I am totally looking forward to this. Pork ribs, spare ribs, cooked on the grill. These look delicious. I got to tell you, these are fabulous. A little tug to it, which is what you want for a good rib. They're cooked perfectly. They're seasoned perfectly. So next time you're at Historic King Stadium and you're looking for some good food, you gotta try to find Amy and find her ribs. Those look so good. I'm gonna have to try to find Amy at the next game I go to. I can see how her barbecue can out Memphis, Memphis style barbecue. All right, well coming up next, see what fans have to say about the University of Iowa. And head over to Kinnick Stadium for Kids Day. We'll be right back after the break. The Hawkeyes are rising. After a trip to the NIT championship game last season, the Iowa men's basketball team will be heating things up on the court once again, and you can help get Carter rocking. Order your season tickets today. Don't miss a minute of the action. Call 1-800-IA-HAWKS or visit HawkeyeSports.com. For more than 100 years, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowan. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa, and now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV. DITV, your news, sports, and weather source for the University of Iowa and is produced by University of Iowa students and presented by the Hawkeye Network. Show your Iowa pride, the Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. The ultimate collection of Iowa Hawkeye merchandise, gifts, and apparel. Help support the University of Iowa. All proceeds benefit men's and women's athletic teams and student programs. The Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. Show your Iowa pride. Call 1-800-HAWK-SHOP or visit www.hawkshop.com. So what do people really love about the University of Iowa? Well, we wanted to know, so we set up shop at the Iowa State Fair. The fair may have come and gone, but the passion Hawkeye fans bring to the University of Iowa is everlasting. 
Hi, I'm Sam Wampler, a sophomore at the University of Iowa, and I'm here volunteering at the State Fair to see what people love most about the University of Iowa. People! They're very friendly, very outgoing, very diverse people. Uh, being involved in uh, meeting new people. All of the activities and clubs you can get involved in and stay engaged on campus with your peers. I like the students. You like the students? I really like the head ball and the area of scenery around there. I love going to the Phoenix Stadium for a football game. There you go. For the Children's Hospital. <laughs> Wrestling. The football game. Why am I not left That's a season. Take a club. <laughs> what is it? Football. Football. Good choice. Great kids. Great, great, great school. Yeah. Go Hawks. <laughs> Well, that just about does it for this week's episode. I hope you got to learn a little more about the University of Iowa and how students, alumni, and research are all making a difference. I know I learned a lot, Lauren, <laughs> but before we go, we'll head back to historic Kinnick Stadium one more time, but not to tailgate. We'll hit the field with the Kid Captains. The Kid Captain program is a partnership between the UI Children's Hospital and the Hawkeye football team, which is celebrating its fifth year. Kid captains are introduced before home games and have their story highlighted during the football season. And they all got a kid's day at the stadium before the season started. Let's check it out. For Inside Iowa, I'm Lauren Moss. And I'm Eric Dawn. See, See you, you next week. week.